anointed. The anointed of God, the only way. He said, John 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, He is the way. And let me rephrase something here. He is the way back to God. He is the truth of God. And He is the life from God. There's no way to get back to God without going through Christ. And so we're going to look into the word right now in St. Matthew chapter 16 from 17 to 19. That's in Matthew 16, 17 to 19. Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou art, blessed art thou, Simon Peter, by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind and hurt shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose and hurt shall be loose in heaven. Twenty then charge ye his disciples that they should not tell any man that he was Jesus the Christ. Father, these are your words. I'm your servant. I'm the one whom you have given your word to give to your people. And so I continue to be a carrier of your word. We thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit who came in the place of Jesus to teach us all things and to bring all things to our remembrance and to enlighten us into the things that be and of your son Christ. Oh, thank you, Father God, for allowing him, oh God, to speak to me and to speak through me and to speak to us, your people. May your words go forward with clarity. May your people receive your word after hearing your word, accept your words, applying your words so that your words can do the transformation and to make them new creatures by your words, they are washed, they are cleansed, they are made whole. So, Father God, by your words, your people are nourished and strengthened as they continue to trust, rely, and depend on you. Here I am this afternoon, your servant, waiting on you, Lord, to be guided and directed by your Holy Spirit. Christ is the only way back to God. Israel turned out to be wild grapes. According to Isaiah chapter 5, but when Christ came, Christ said he is the true vine and his father is the vine dresser or the husband man. And so brothers, sisters, and listeners, there are so many voices today that are speaking. There are so many that are pointing people to a way and the way they are pointing is away from God. There are so many gods that have been worshipped today but there is only one true and living God. As I look into your words I'm understanding what Christ said because in verse 17 and when we back up, uh, we'll find there's a conversation between Christ and his disciples. And he questioned them. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, and some Jeremiah's are Jeremiah and some the prophets. Jesus said unto them directly now, but whom say he that I am? Now if this question was asked to you, what would be your response? Who do you say he is? 
every religion paint a different picture of Christ. And some do not understand that Christ was sent by God to get a earthly body named Jesus, that the body named Jesus would carry out the earthly function of Christ because Christ is a spirit being and he could not uh, lay down his life for the redemption of mankind. And so God prepared my body. If it's that body, people are so confused these days. Some people say Christ uh, gave up his life. Christ was crucified and Christ was dead and Christ was buried and Christ arose. Christ couldn't die. He's the son of God. And so when we read the word of God, we need to understand it. And that is where a lot of people are being mis misled because of lack of knowledge and understanding. So when Jesus asked the question, uh, Peter stood up and I guess he thought for a moment. I guess he was listening for the answer. Because when he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, we have the first mention of the New Testament church. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. Let's look into it a bit. Jesus said, mankind, flesh and blood, have not revealed this unto you. So we need to understand. I remember a sister called me one day and she told me, she was saying to me that uh, she, the church she was going to, she wanted to leave because uh, the people are saying this and whenever she do this, uh, they say that and she was, she was ready to leave. But very quick, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I love the Holy Spirit because it's ever present. I said to her, you are a spirit living in a body. Your spirit knows, your body feels. And so your senses pick up uh, the signals, uh, they hear what people are saying and uh, it's getting into your system and uh, you're making a decision based on how you feel, but you should make the decision based on what you know. You read the words of God, you need to get the understanding of the word of God so that uh, when the enemy show up with something, you can say to them like Jesus said, it is written. And this is where a lot of people go wrong because uh, they never seem to remember that it is written. It is there for you. And so you have to use the word. Like I explained in uh, St. Luke chapter 8 and verse 12, uh, where it said, when you receive the word, the devil come to take away the word. But I say to people, the devil cannot take the word of God because the word of God is like a two-headed sword. It is like fire. It is too hot for the devil to handle. But what the devil will do is create uh, the, the opportunity for you to forget what the word says uh, and believe what he said. He continue from Genesis 1, from the, the book of Genesis, uh, where the devil said to the woman, did God say? She heard what God said. She understood what God said. Her response should be, yes, God says so. And that is what I'm going to do. But she doubted what God said. And she accept what the devil said. And that was when the problem started. So brothers and sisters and listeners, let me say to you that when the enemy show up and try to tell you something contrary, always remember what the word of God says. Now we find it right here in the scripture, you know, because just after Peter 
said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus confirmed. Jesus said, uh, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I'm coming back to that verse, but let me point out something to you uh, in line with what I was saying. Jesus, in verse 21, from that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Now here is a man that God just spoke to and Christ said, yes, it's my father just talked to you. Peter, verse 22, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him saying, be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be unto you, my brothers and sisters. But he turned and said, Jesus turned and said to Peter, get the ends behind me, Satan. Now I want you to understand what Jesus was talking about. Jesus was not asking Peter to get behind him because Jesus knew that it was not Peter that was speaking, but the same way the father spoke to Peter, the devil show up and talk to Peter. So Jesus said, Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those things that are of men. So my brothers and sisters, we have to be so careful, especially, hallelujah, glory to God. As born again believers, we have to be careful whose voice we are listening to. Sometimes you walk on the road and you see some people and they're looking up in the air, uh, bright sunlight, they're looking up uh, and they are talking. Who are they talking to? What are they talking to? Because the devil continue to be a deceiver, a seducer, a deceptor. And so here we look at the word blessed. And when I look into St. Matthew chapter 5, the word blessed, it means happy, to be envied, having life joy and satisfaction, regardless of the outward condition, to be envied. So blessed you are you, Simon Barjona, an Aramic for son of Jonah, for flesh and blood at not reveal this unto you. It is not man that make this known unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Can I tell you something? Jesus referred to his Father as being in heaven. Because after God created, hallelujah, after God created mankind and gave him his assignment, gave him dominion, and the man was now king of the earth, and God was the king of kings. But after Adam failed, God did not create another being. He did not make another man. God took over the work and he did it himself until when he was ready to go back to heaven, he went back to heaven where Christ and the Holy Spirit were. And then God released Christ to come to continue the work that he had started. So we have the Trinity. We have the Father who is the Almighty God. We have the Son who is the anointed of God. And we have the Holy Spirit who is the active force of God. So Christ saying that uh, his Father, which is in heaven, has made this revelation to Peter. I'm also looking, brothers and sisters, uh, at uh, uh, very quickly at verse 2, at verse 18. And I say also, so notice the words here, I say 
also that flesh and blood. The word also prove Christ to be a separate person from the Father. In verse 17, the Father had given a revelation. And in verse 18, Jesus also gave a revelation. So here now, the Father gave a revelation and the Son is giving a revelation. Then I say also, so there's an agreement with the Father and the Son that thou art Peter. And this is very important for the Greek word patros, P-A-T-R-O-S, and Abrahamic Kepha, K-E-P-H-A-S, St. John 1, 14, a fragmented rock. So Jesus said no on this rock, but the church, like I said, this is the first mention of the New Testament church. It could not be built on Peter. So we find here that uh, he said, I will build my church. Underline those words. I, the, on this rock, I will build my church. Referring to Christ, the speaker, as in John 2, verse 19. And 6 verse 53 to 58. This is what not Patra, but Petra, P E T R A, an immovable stone. Christ himself, the only foundation of the church. My brothers and sisters, we have so many church these days, so many congregations. Uh, but Christ said he will build his church. A group of called out, set apart, uh, Holy Ghost controlled believers. And no church didn't say Holy Ghost filled because I, I noticed times and times again, people say, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I question, can you carry the Holy Ghost? If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, can you manage that? But the proper terminology is uh, you are fully controlled by the Holy Spirit uh, or the Holy Ghost uh, because he was sent uh, by the Father, by the authority of Christ, uh, that he should replace him. He should come in his stead uh, to teach you all the things uh, that Jesus taught and then to bring them back to your memory. And so my brothers and sisters, uh, I've been teaching on uh, the, the mission of the Holy Spirit. So here he's saying uh, that Christ is the immovable stone. Christ himself, the only foundation of the church. Other foundation can no man build. Let me go very quickly to Ephesians chapter 2. That's Ephesians chapter 2. Verse um, verse 20 to 22, Ephesians chapter 2, 20 to 22, we find here where Paul was writing to the church. And he said the church was built on the testimony of the apostles, Christ himself, the chief cornerstone we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2 because I want to read it 20 let me read 19 now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners uh, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Remember what Christ said in Ephesians 4 and verse 11, and he gave some men 
apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So it said here now that the foundation is built on the foundation of the apostle and prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grow it unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So when I hear people talk about my church and my church, and this is my church, the church don't belong to anybody. The church belong to Christ. He said, I, yes, there are some churches that belong to some people, but not the church that Christ said he will build. And so we find here, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, when Christ said that uh, on this rock, I will build my church, Okedomia, build, build up, edify, use of building the body of Christ, the church. Brothers and sisters, there, there, there's so many people are going into the building and say they go to church. But the building is not the church. And Christ never even practiced going into the building. He go where he can reach the people. But these days, so much emphasis of place and buildings and uh, furniture and all of this sort of thing. Who can have uh, the biggest church and the best church? And But my brothers and sisters, uh, understand the word of God. I will build my church says Christ in Acts chapter 2, I think from 49 down, Christ said he will add to the church daily such as should be saved. But he also make another revelation. He said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of Hades, my brothers and sisters, cannot prevail, it cannot stop the church. What has been happening while you see some members are going in and coming out because they are not committed to Christ? If you are a member of the body of Christ, you have divine protection. I, 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 look, at, uh, uh, I look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, which I dealt with the other day on Bible study, where uh, Paul said, that Christ will seal the believers with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Why are we? Why are we so unstable? Why so many people are going in and coming out, uh, and uh, sometimes they have some excuse that uh, there are too many hypocrites in the church. And I say to them, when people say that to me, I say to them, I said. If you allow the hypocrites to cause you to leave the house of God, then the hypocrite is closer to God than you because you go gone and leave the hypocrite there. And they're just going to try and find some other people. They are using, the devil is using them just like you use Peter. But Jesus recognized that, hallelujah, glory to God. This was a plan of the devil. And so Jesus rebuked the devil, not Peter. Get the answer and be Satan. You're an offense unto me. Don't allow people to get you discouraged and allow people to want you to leave the fellowship with the saints. Abide in me. And if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will. When you leave, how are you going to get what you desire? So here I looked at the, the Bible tells us here that the believers, the born-again believers, are sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. And by this seal, we are safe and secure in the arms of Jesus. By this seal, it confirms or approves our testimony. It also confirms ownership. The songwriter said, no, I belong to Jesus. Jesus belonged to me. 
not when the years are come and gone, but throughout eternity. That's why when Jesus uh, uh, spoke in St. John 10, 10, he said, the thief, referring to those leaders uh, that came before him that were destroying the flock, uh, they were not good shepherd. But when Christ came, Christ said, he is the good shepherd because they were bad shepherd. They were destroying the flock for their own personal gain, like many pastors and leaders today. Destroying the faith of the people for their own personal gain. But uh, uh, with this seal, it shows ownership. By the seal, God know them that belong to him. The Holy Spirit of adoption is given to every born again believer. Everyone who repents, Romans 8, 10 and 14 to 16. And he has this spirit as God's seal that he belong to the heavenly family. There's a family in heaven. Stay with the Lord. Don't look around at the people that come to the church, to your congregation. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Stop paying attention to people who are in the church to spy out your liberty, who are in the church to get what they can, not to contribute to to the upkeep, well-being, and growth of the body of Christ. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Yes, the Bible says Satan has blinded their minds. But don't let him blind your mind. I, I listen to people quoting the scripture that said, In the last days, people shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrine of devils. And I said, don't use that scripture as a fulfillment of what you see happening now. When you're born again, Christ accepts you into his family. In fact, he take you, he cleanse you, he purify you, and he present you to the father. The father accept you as his son. Now are we the sons of God. He give your family rights and privilege. And so you must remain with him until he that endureth unto the end shall be saved, shall be safe, shall be preserved. So my brothers and sisters, don't allow the powers of darkness to turn you away from your faith in God. When you are born again, you get what is called the living, divinely implanted, acquired, and wholehearted principle of inward and wholehearted confidence, trust, reliance, dependence on God, and all that he says. And so when Paul was challenged by the enemy and he overcame, he said, I have kept the faith. I did not waver. I did not give up. I have kept the faith. No, there's a crown of life awaiting me, and not for me only, but for all those that would keep the faith, for all those that would continue unto the end. In verse 19, he said, I will give thee, give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Can you turn very quickly with me to send Matthew chapter 18? Because this is very important. You are given the authority. You are given the power to overcome. And so uh, St. Matthew uh, 18, it tells us here that what's, I read it very quickly. St. Matthew 18, verse 18. Verily, I say unto you, so believers promise power of attorney. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind 
on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Brothers and sisters and listeners, verse 19, he said, Again, I say unto you that if two of you born again believers shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Brothers, sisters, and listeners, do we know who we are and whose we are? When I think about uh, when I was born, my father did not own me and said, no, I'm not his child. And so he never support me. But can I tell you something? Before I was born, God knew me. And he has been taking care of me ever since. He never forsake me. In fact, Jesus said that he will not forsake us. He will not give up on us. He will be with us unto the end. So when your earthly father turns his back on you, your heavenly father is always there for you. I'll tell you a little secret, brothers and sisters. Uh, when I was growing up as a young boy, uh, my grand aunt, who I grew with most of my life, uh, she always wanted me to read the Bible. And so I, I have to go every night she wanted to sleep. She called me to come read the Bible. I didn't like it then. But then I proved afterwards that she was sowing a seed in me, a good seed, a genuine seed. And so when I, when I look at, uh, uh, into the word of God, I see where after the time came that she told me I could not stay in her house any longer. I have to leave. But that's what I'm saying to you. I am who I am today because of God. My regret in life was that she was not saved, but she pointed me to Christ the way. In verse 10 of Psalm 27, I remembered it. And the day when she told me I had to leave her house, I left and I went to a empty house of another relative of mine. Nobody was living there. I went and I knelt on the veranda. I couldn't pray up such then. I know I can say something. But I knelt down. And the words came back to me. When mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take me up. And I repeat those words as I look at the sun setting in the west. I repeat those words. I said, God, you say, when mother and father forsake me, then you will take me up. Here am I. Father never honed me. Mother gave me up. I know my granddad gave me up. I said, God, here am I. Hallelujah. Thank God. He never turned his back on me from that time on. Can I say to somebody uh, that is listening right now, God will never turn his back on you. As long as you recognize that Christ is the only way to God, because uh, he said he is the way back to God. He's the truth of God. And he's a life from God. And so he said, I establish a relationship with you. You have come now to be a part of the heavenly family. And I will give unto you the keys. Keys are a symbol of authority. Here they mean authority and power to do the work of Christ. Matthew 18, 18. I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom. In Matthew 4, 17, Christ said, when you preach, preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come. King James Version said, it's coming. But Christ said, I am the key, king of the kingdom. I come to establish the kingdom. As I said, the government of the kingdom shall open his shoulders. And he came to establish a kingdom. That's why it's the only way into the kingdom. 
They said, if you want to get into the kingdom, repent, turn around, accept Christ as your savior and accept God as your father. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And like I read earlier in verse 20, then charge ye his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Keep the secret until when the fullness of time is come, then you can testify. You can tell it. And so the time came, brothers and sisters and listeners, uh, that it was time to reveal what Christ said unto them. Then Matthew 17, he, he took them up uh, to Mount Nebo, Mount, called the Mount of Transfiguration. And after he took them up there, it was the father who had called him because he said whatever he did was what he heard from the father and he was obedient to the father. So the father said, come. It was an handing over ceremony. So when he went up there, uh, Moses appeared and Elijah appeared. So the disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John, they saw uh, Moses, uh, Elijah, and Jesus. They became confused, Master. Let us build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But when the glory of God shone around them, they fell to the ground. But the words that they heard, this is, when we talk about Christ, the only way, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear he, him. And so after everything, Jesus said, keep this. Don't say anything to anybody as yet. The time will come when you must tell it. But when I look at St. John 17 and, 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 and verse 8, Christ said to his disciples, he said to his father, he said, Father, I have given unto them, the disciples, the word that you gave me. So up on the Mount of Transfiguration, God gave him the word, and then he gave it to his disciples. And he said they received the word and come to know in reality that he came forth from the Father. My brothers and sisters, do you know him? The only way out of your problem the only way out of your darkness, the only way out of your ignorance, the only way out of your troubles is the only way. Stop searching for a way out. You want to get rich? Christ said, you cannot serve God, the one that controls all riches, and Maman. Maman is the God of money. Plutus. You can't serve God and serve mammon because you will not be profitable. If you're going to serve God, serve God. But if you're going to serve mammon, then you're on your own. God said to Israel, I put before you two ways, the way to life and the way to death. But I'd rather you choose life because God gave man freedom of choice. And so my brothers and sisters and listeners, Christ, the only way back to God, he came to take him back into the family of God. He said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, meaning you must change your relationship to have a relationship with God. Because that's the only way you're going to be profitable. Trust God. 
keep his commandment. Christ came to take you back into the family of God. Christ said to Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my father. God is ready and waiting to talk to you as a son. God bless you today. Seek him before it is too late. This is Elder Samuel Robinson with the word of God and the word from God. Representing Christ as his ambassador, one that he has called, prepared, chosen, and sent to tell you that he is the only way back to the Father and that you are lost without him. Tune in, subscribe. Let us pray. Father, I have delivered the words as the Holy Spirit led me. And I trust, Father God, that the listeners have heard the word, that they have received the word, that they accept the word, and that they will apply the word, and that they will experience a new relationship with, with you, Father. And that they will allow the Holy Spirit to, to teach them about you and about Christ. And would bring them into that inner circle with you. Father, it are those who are sick, wounded, cast down. It are those who are deceived by the deceiver. If there are those who have been led astray and they are in the darkness of this world, God, Christ prayed that you would keep the believers into the world so that the believers can shine as a light in the world of darkness. That Matthew said, let your light so shine before men and that you would keep them from the evil one so that they can carry out your work. Father God, Please hear the prayer of your servant now. Let somebody come to know you as the Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory and honor, dominion and power, majesty and might be unto him who live, who reign, who delivers, who secure. And we put our trust on him, we rely on the pen. This is Elder Samuel Robinson from the New Testament Assembly, 2A Allen Avenue, Port Antonio, Portland, Jamaica. My website, samuelandtheword.org. You can follow me on YouTube on a Monday night at 8 o'clock. We have Bible study. Also, We have books on sale, March for a Lifetime, The Beatitude, Psalm 100, Lord, teach us to pray. On our website, you can find 12 symbols of the word of God, which is very, very important. But today we are looking at and looking into the word of God. And we want to talk about Christ. Yet, hallelujah, glory to God.